Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, today we will start with a new topic or a new module of 5 lectures uh, that is on constitutive analysis. Okay, so, sometime we say constitutive analysis or you can uh, hear maybe term called constitutive equation or constitutive model or modeling. Or con so, constitutive model means uh, the basic idea on which you have developed the analysis or the equation. Okay, so, uh, this analysis equation model will be uh, interchangeably will be used in this particular lectures. Okay. So, what do we mean by constitutive analysis or constitutive equations? Okay. So, constitutive equations are uh, relationships basically okay, between stress, strain, strain rate and temperature. Okay. So, you take and it can be between any of the two this variable between stress and strain okay or it can be between stress and strain rate or it can be between stress and temperature or you can combine all strain strain rate and temperature and relate it with the stress okay so the relationship between the stress and these parameters okay that is what we call as constitutive equation okay so wherever you were hear about constitutive it will be dealing with these parameters. Uh, usually and we will see uh, in it in more detail, okay. there are different type of models. Uh, the most uh, popular ones, uh, one is the phenomenological model. Okay. We will see what do we mean by phenomenological okay. and these are empirical in nature because the actual process which is taking place is so complex. Okay. So, you cannot kind of get an equation from the first principle. Okay. So, usually in, in hot deformation especially uh, because of the complexities of the processes which are taking place. Okay. So, you are having dislocation generation, you are having dislocation recovery, okay. and then you have dislocation glide, dislocation climb okay. so, and uh, va va vacancies are there, solutes are there, they are also diffusing. Okay. So, there are so many effects which are kind of combining together that making a, a simplified model or making a first principle model okay, is very difficult process okay, to account all these effects in, in one equation. So, what uh, is usually uh, practiced is that you develop empirical relationships. Okay. And uh, how it helps, okay. so constitutive equation when you develop for any material. Okay, it will help you to uh, first understand the uh, what what kind of metallurgical processes are going on in the material during hot deformation. Okay, so it will tell you about the mechanical behavior uh, behavior under high temperature deformation because we are talking about high temperature deformation. It depends on what type of deformation you are doing. So it will tell you something about that. Okay, and the Another thing is it will be able to tell you about the or you it will be able to help you in developing a for example, a FEM model. Okay. So, suppose you want to develop a model for your hot rolling or extrusion or forging process. Okay. So, to develop that model you need this constitutive equation okay, to tell the model that how the material is going to behave under these conditions. Okay. So, you will apply the boundary condition and mechanics on the model okay, by putting constraint okay, this is how the deformation is going on, but you also have to put in that how the material is going to behave under those imposed condition okay, and that will be told by the constitutive equation. So, that constitutive equation has to go in uh, at the appropriate place for proper modeling. So, depending upon how you well you are developing the constitutive equation, okay, 
your modeling will be of th that level okay that it will be able to predict all the stresses strain strain rate during the deformation accurately if you have a accurate constitutive model okay now there are different type of constitutive models as i was telling you okay phenomenological is very popular uh, in this flow stress is predicted based on empirical observations okay so uh, then as the name suggests it is kind of you understand the phenomena okay and uh, applying some logic you are uh, using th those ideas to develop a empirical relationship okay so which parameters to consider which parameter to take in the numerator or denominator okay that will be decided by the phenomenology or ph phenomena which is taking place okay and that will give you a cue that what type of equation has to be developed okay so while doing the empirical uh, analysis you have to find out that what is the relationship between different parameters okay so that when you put it you will be able to develop a empirical relationship between them and you will get ultimately a some mathematical function okay uh, and of course it is usually developed for different temperature ranges and strain rate ranges because the material behavior changes as a function of strain rate or temperature okay at lower temperature you can see that only you have dislocation glide as the deformation mechanism as you go to high temperature you also have dislocation climb and then the diffusion of self diffusion and solute diffusion and so on okay so your material behavior changes so you develop the constitutive equation for temp different strain rate range and temperature ranges then there are some physical based constitutive model which is based on the actual processes which takes place during the deformation so the physical aspect of the material behavior is considered for example uh, dislocation generation or dislocation recovery how dislocations are directly uh, uh, taking part in the deformation process so basically that is what you try to develop through first principle in this case so using theory of thermodynamics thermally activated dislocation movement and kinetics okay but because as i told you it it is not a very clear picture we where you can easily get, get this equation from first principle so it required large number of constants to fit the equation okay or to get your required constitutive equation then now nowadays a very important technique which is coming up is called artificial neural network okay ann models okay the importance of ann model is that you don't have to understand the actual uh, metallurgical process okay so basically you have some input data and you have some output data so input data will be in form of a strain rate and temperature for example and output is in the form of stress so you have these parameters these are input and you have some output so basically you train the ann model okay using this data okay and then you try to uh, predict that uh, at any other condition what will be the stress okay so the nn models are also gaining lot of importance uh, mainly the importance which it is gaining because uh, when you develop this phenomenological or physical based constitutive model uh, the problem is that uh, all your this uh, response uh, in terms of stress is non linearly dependent on the temperature and strain rate okay whenever we develop empirical equation okay we try to uh, make uh, or we try to uh, make a graph between the response and the input parameter so that we get some linear curve okay because in linear when you have linear curve or linear straight line okay uh, it, it is easier for me to do a regression analysis and get an empirical equation okay if it is a non linear function then it is a very difficult one to find out whether it is a exponential curve or parabolic curve or hyperbolic curve or so and so on okay but in a straight line i can easily using best fit line i can find out whether how much this straight line is close to the actual data okay so you want to have some linear relationship whenever you develop the empirical relationships 
but our stress and the response is actually non-linear as a function of temperature and strain rate. That is why developing these empirical relationships are difficult and you have so many models to do that. So, NN, NN helps there because it, it is not worried about all these uh, problems of non-linearity, it fits lot of poly, polynomial equation between these parameters okay, and uh, do something in that black box which we call as ANN model and gives you give you the output. Okay. Only problem with ANN model is that you would not be able to understand the material behavior uh, from that. Okay. And why that is important? That is important because when you are designing a material, okay, if I do not know the material behavior, how, how I am going to design it. Okay. So, that is the only problem with ANN model that I would not be able to get a clear picture about the material behavior that how material is behaving or what parameter is controlling the response that will be very difficult for me to understand from ANN model. Okay. So, I would not get a very good first hand uh, experience of the material. However, you have very good accuracy of flow stress predicted by these models. Okay. Whereas, with regression analysis uh, developing this empirical relationship, you have lower accuracy. Okay. Now, uh, to uh, get, give you a feel of constitutive equation, okay, if one of the most familiar constitutive equation you must have come across is Hooke's law. Okay. So, that is also a constitutive equation just to uh, take the, the, the fear out of the, this particular term. Okay. So, basically in that what we do is we uh, relate stress with the strain, very, very simple uh, equation okay. and basically you can see that it is already linear okay, because when you have plot of stress and strain in the elastic regime, okay, it is a straight line, okay, a linear behavior in the elastic regime and the slope of this particular line gives you the Young's modulus very simple equation and it is already linear because the curve starts from 0, you do not have a constant here. So, it, it is an equation of this type okay, where only this particular term is there okay, and this term is 0. Okay. So, it is a constitutive equation, a linear already a linear equation very simple uh, uh, to understand okay, and the slope gives you the Young's modulus straightforward uh, I can get it. Okay. Now, to uh, coming to hot deformation, okay, basically first process which you do is to generate data. Okay. So, whether you do phenomenological modeling or if you do physical based modeling or you do NN modeling, first uh, you have to find out that how what is the response of the material to different uh, parameters. Okay. So, the first uh, thing which you do is generate data okay, and if you generate good uh, qual quality of data, your model will be that much accurate. Okay. So, you should pay uh, at, most, at most attention or at most attention during this process that data generation or it should be all the uh, experiment should be done religiously. Okay. You should not take any shortcut here do a good uh, experiments. Okay. If any in any experiment suppose you, you, you are not sure about that the deformation was progressed properly, do another one. Okay. Because the uh, amount of work which you put in here okay, that will kind of reflect in your constitutive equation. Okay. So, first thing is always to put uh, maximum attention and maximum care to develop or to get the data for your constitutive equation. Okay. So, in high temperature deformation, th there are two uh, very important parameters. Okay. These are strain rate okay, and temperature. So, you have these two as the main input okay. and of course, output is your stress. Why we do not consider strain? Okay, more or less if you see in high temperature deformation, if it is dynamic recrystallization also, if, if it is only having one single peak, 
that you get a steady state condition that means the stress is not changing much with the uh, with the strain okay for example you can see in these different curves okay different strain levels more or less stress is constant so you have a reached a steady state okay if in your flow curve you also are seeing maybe a strain hardening part okay so it is something like this for example then you should also consider strain in this term okay because your flow stress is continuously changing as a function of a strain but if it is a steady state okay then i would be mainly interested in strain rate and temperature okay so this you should uh, understand that why is most of the time you don't have a strain in this constitutive equation when you are developing for hot deformation similarly if you develop for low temperature okay temperature below 0.4 of uh, melting point you will see that strain rate is not there okay because the strain rate dependence of stress uh, reduces as you go to lower temperatures okay so you will see this effect that uh, constitutive equations are changing as a function of temperature so what you do in this data generation I've, uh, as you can see you are deforming at different temperatures okay and you are deforming at different strain rates okay so you are generating data like that deformation at different strain rate and different temperature and then you will use this uh, uh, idea, this uh, input to uh, develop the constitutive equation okay now what important material parameters you will be trying to find out here is basically his, uh, if it is uh, your stress is function of strain then strain hardening coefficient if your stress is function of strain rate then your strain rate sensitivity if your stress is function of temperature okay activation energy for deformation okay so these three are very important material parameter which you want to find out okay from the uh, when you are developing the constitutive equation okay so this um, and these material parameter actually gives you some indication about th that how the material is behaving under the deformation conditions okay so i will tell you one by one that how you can get these parameters okay from the data in a simplified way right now okay later on you will be able to see during the actual or uh, when you want to develop a comprehensive constitutive equation for hot deformation work okay how you can find out these parameter from the data okay right now i am just giving you the sense of these parameters uh, by doing a analysis okay so the strain hardening okay uh, i think uh, we must have seen earlier also that stress is uh, a function of strain okay and it is a exponent uh, th th there is a, a exponent on the strain term okay so it has some exponential type of behavior so if you remember uh, we just uh, drew it earlier also that this is my the linear part after yielding it will have something like this okay so basically this n is the slope of this exponential curve okay some some kind of exponential curve is this okay and uh, how to find out this exponent n okay so basically you can find out the at uh, different strain levels what is the value of stress okay so you have epsilon 1 epsilon 2 epsilon 3 sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 and so on okay so now if you see this particular equation if i take logarithmic on both the side okay it will the exponent will come down here now it will be something like this now it becomes a linear equation as i told you that whenever we want to develop empirical equation i want to linearize the 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 particular equation so that i uh, whenever whatever parameter the k parameter and the n parameter i get from the equation I can easily say with surety, okay, this is the best fit straight line I am fitting, and 
this is the regression coefficient ok how close it, it, it is to the to the value of 1 that gives me the confidence in the in the constitutive equation ok. So, for example, now I will be plotting ln epsilon versus ln of sigma here and of course, you will get some points like this ok, I, I am not sure ok and then I will fit a straight base fit line to this ok. So, the slope will be equal to n and the intercept will be equal to k ok. So, of course, it will be log k here and you have to take anti log of that ok. So, this slope will be n ok and this will be your constant c. So, doing a simple analysis like this I will be able to get the strain hardening coefficient which is n here. Similarly, you can do for strain rate sensitivity ok. If you see a general uh, form of constitutive equation for high temperature deformation ok, you will see something like this ok. So, sigma is equal to c epsilon dot to the power m ok and these are uh, you are getting this for see whenever you want to find out a particular constant ok, you have to make other input parameters as, as constant ok. Then only you will be able to get the for example, if you want to calculate strain rate sensitivity, I will keep the strain and temperature as the constant ok. So, these two are the are constant ok, then only I will be able to find out the strain rate sensitivity ok. So, again you can see that there is a some kind of exponential dependence of stress on strain rate ok. So, again as we were just discussing uh, basically what I am going to do for a fixed temperature at some temperature let us say just for argument sake 500 degree Celsius ok. At a temperature of 500 degree Celsius ok, I am doing test and finding out the something like this ok. So, this is strain rate 1, this is strain rate 2, this is at a strain rate 3. So, at different strain rates I am deforming the material at a fixed temperature. So, my temperature is constant ok. Now, I want to fix my strain also. So, let us say I want to do find out the stress value at a particular strain ok. So, strain is now constant ok and now I will find out what is sigma value for different strain rates. So, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, sigma 4. Okay. So, now what I have got for different strain rate and you can see that as so the strain rate is increasing in this direction. So, as in say as strain rate is increasing my stress is increasing. So, there is a dependence of stress on the strain rate ok. And again I can do the same thing I if I take log on both the side. So, log of sigma ln of c sorry c plus m ln epsilon dot ok. So, again I have linearized the equation ok and now if taking all these values again if I draw epsilon dot ln ln sigma here ok, you will get some kind of again data points ok and a base fit line straight line and the slope will give you the strain rate sensitivity m ok. So, as you can see very clearly here ok, this is basically slope of uh, the curve between sigma and epsilon dot between ln sigma and ln epsilon dot ok. So, so you are differentiating that particular one. So, basically you are trying to find out the slope ok, where your strain and temperatures are constant. So, that already we have taken care. So, we because we have taken data only from that. So, this is how this is the way I can calculate the strain rate sensitivity of the material during high temperature deformation. Now, why it is important ok? If you see this particular curve here that as my m is increasing ok, my elongation is increasing that means the ductility of the material is increasing as the strain rate sensitivity is increasing ok. 
So it will be nice for me if I will be able to deform material where the strain rate sensitivity is high. Okay, that way I will be having I will be able to have higher or I can impose more strain in the material because ductility is good. Okay, uh, and uh, 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 you can see here for different material they have plotted it. Okay, so as M is increasing, okay. So, from 0.2 to 0.6 you can see that the ductility is increasing and even it is reaching 1000 percent here, okay. very high ductility and this is where uh, if you remember I told you about super plasticity, this is where you will be able to say with confidence that it has super plastic, super plastic uh, or super plasticity is there in the material, okay. basically anything above 300 percent I would should be able to say it is super plastic okay. and if you see around 300 percent uh, my M is coming around 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 okay. and this is what is the definition for super plasticity that if any material has to behave in a super plastic uh, condition okay, the strain rate sensitivity should be more than 0 0.33 or uh, so some people say point it should be 0.4 in general it can be about 0.3 okay so you can see very clearly around 300 to 400 percent if i take as a cutoff for super plastic deformation okay or elongation of that kind you will be able to see the m is in the range of around 0.3 to 0.4 okay and it should be above that then you will be able to see super plasticity in the material okay so this is how i can calculate the strain rate sensitivity as i have shown just now in the previous slide that how I can calculate the strain rate sensitivity uh, and that, that is an important parameter during high temperature deformation. I want to have higher strain rate sensitivity for higher elongation. Another very important parameter is activation energy for high temperature deformation. Okay. And uh, again you can see there is some, uh, so now these are very simplified relationships because we are taking other parameters as constant. But when you develop the whole constitutive equation, all these parameters will come together. Okay, so if you can, if you see this particular equation here, okay, uh, sigma is again there is some constant exponential function is there, and uh, 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 in that you have Q by R T. Okay, and it is again you can see that we are keeping few things constant here. So epsilon the strain and the strain rate is constant. Okay. So, for this the data or plots which I am going to use will be like this. Okay. So, now I am doing at a particular strain rate, let us say I am doing it at a strain rate of 10 to the power 1 just for argument sake okay. or 10, okay. 10 strain rate and uh, now I am again kind of getting the stress strain curve okay, for different temperature T1, T2, T3 and T4. Okay. So, my strain rate is constant, so this is taken care now and now I can do it for a particular strain here. So, strain is also constant and for different temperature I will get the stress value sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 sigma 4. Okay. So, this is how I will be able to calculate now the activation energy. So, if you see that the activation energy uh, of deformation okay, is function as the temperature is increasing, your stress is increasing. Okay. So, so, as temperature is increasing 1 by T is decreasing. Okay. So, if I want to take 1 by T here as increasing my temperature is increasing in this direction. So, at higher temperature uh, your flow stress has to be low, okay. sorry as temperature is uh, decreasing. So, it is T 1 is more than T 2 is more than T 3 is more than T 4. So, temperature is more in T1 and less in T4, okay. but the stress is higher. So, there is an inverse relationship here. Okay. So, when temperature is more, stress will be low. 
okay. Where as temperature is reducing, okay, my stress is increasing. So, it will have some kind of data like this for a stress as a function of 1 by t. So, when temperature is reducing here, 1 by t is increasing here, okay, and that is how the stress is changing, okay. So, if I plot uh, 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 now again as I as you can see I have done uh, 1 by t and uh, this sigma I have to take as log because to make it le this equation linear what I will be doing again taking logarithmic logarithmic on both the side it will be something like this this is c 2 and this is an exponential term. So, basically your q by rt will come like this. Okay. So, now if you see this particular equation, it, it is a linear equation, this is y, this is your constant c plus 1 by t is your x axis. So, q by r becomes your slope. Okay. So, if I plot a straight line here, now my q by r becomes the slope of this equation. Okay. And this is how I am going to get the R is your universal gas constant. Okay, so whatever value comes, you multiply it by R, then you will get the Q in joules per mole. Okay, and testing temperature you have to take in Kelvin. So if I plot my lawn of stress as a function of one by t, I will be getting something uh, uh, the the plot like this, and from there I will be able to calculate the activation energy for deformation. Okay. Okay, so, I have already told you how to calculate the activation energy for deformation. Okay. Now, if you see there are different straight range for different processes. Okay. So, at high temperature also you have large variation of uh, strain rate where you have different type of processes which can takes place. Okay. So, I am just kind of defining here different type of processes okay, because these, these we will take uh, later on when we will discuss uh, constitutive equation in more detail. Okay. So, the first one in here is that you have at very low strain rate 10 to the power minus 8 to 10 to the power minus 5 strain rate. At that you get the uh, deformation called creep okay. and that is a very common failure uh, mechanism in any material which is used in, in high temperature condition. So, at very low flow stresses also okay, uh, under the applied load uh, structure on the structural material if it is at high temperature it keeps deforming as a function of time. So, it, it deforms at constant load or constant stress. Okay. So, creep deformation is a very slow process time dependent process, but the material keep deforming under the uh, very small applied stress okay, which can be its own weight or maybe if it is a um, moving part uh, under the forces of uh, centrifugal forces or something like that. Okay, it keeps deforming okay, and what will happen the, that the, your dimensions will change after some time for your component and that will lead to the failure of the uh, material. Okay. So, this is one uh, uh, mechanism uh, which takes place at very slow strain rate. Then the next uh, strain rate range is 10 to the power minus 5 to 10 to the power minus 1 okay, where you actually do a quasi static tension test. So, normal tension test which you do in laboratory okay, these are usually in this temperature range. For example, for super plasticity also we will be doing uh, when we want to characterize super plasticity super plasticity we will be doing in this particular strain rate range okay. or when you do your room temperature tensile test also you do at uh, strain rate of maybe 10 to the power minus 2 or so. So, that is why these are called quasi static it is not exactly static it is quasi static very slow uh, deformation you are doing. Okay. Then comes the another range 10 to the power minus 1 to 10 to the power 2. Okay, now, you are going to high strain rate uh, kind of regime, these are dynamic tension or compression okay. and this is where you do basically hot working also. So, all your industrial hot working processes, thermomechanical processing are done in this strain rate range okay. and this is where I would be doing super plasticity for example. Okay. 
then you can go even uh, f ahead furthermore with 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 4 strain rate okay these are high speed testing using impact bar okay one of the uh, equipment can be what we call as, call as a split hopkinson uh, uh, test bar okay so basically you keep the sample and you hit it with a with a very heavy rod okay so the, st the strain rates are very high okay and the range for that strain rate is 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 4 okay uh, very high strain rate deformations uh, uh, can be possible here then you can go even ahead with 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 8 strain rate these are hyper velocity impact using gas guns or explosives okay so very high uh, impact you can ha have to get through explosive techniques okay so basically if you want to characterize a armor plate okay you should be going for this kind of strain rate okay that how the material is behaving under the impact condition okay so these are the different straight range rate range okay in which different type of uh, deformation mechanism are operated or or uh, would be operating okay and as i was telling you in the beginning that empirical equations are usually made for particular straight range straight rate range so these are the ranges okay so i will be developing a different constitutive equation for creep deformation another constitutive equation for a superplastic deformation for example another type of constitutive equation for hot working uh, kind of problem even another constitutive equation for uh, uh, even higher uh, strain rate range 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 4. So, for different strain rate range depending upon these uh, what kind of actual deformation mechanism which is taking place in the material you will be developing different set of constitutive equation for these uh, straight rate range. Okay. So, this is how I can find out the straight rate range. So, thank you with this I have kind of covered the initial part of uh, constitutive equation what are the important material parameters uh, straight rate range and what are the different type of constitutive equation phenomenological physical based or uh, through an n type of uh, modeling okay. and uh, what parameters you are actually going to find out there okay, which uh, kind of characterize a particular deformation process. Okay. Thank you.